crisis. But first, power to the people. You're about to get your share thanks to an amazing and revolutionary device. It is called the fuel cell. Hydrogen and oxygen love to come together. When they do, they produce H2O, water. The reaction also produces electrical energy. Capturing that energy had been a problem, frustrating scientists for more than a century. But now that problem has been solved. So what does that mean to you and me? This fuel cell technology will be to uh, the next century what the computer was uh, to the later part of the 19th century. To understand why some engineers rank the fuel cell right up there with the computer in terms of importance, take a look under the hood. Fuel cells unleash the power of hydrogen for the venturer. That was New Jersey's official entry in last year's American Tour de Seoul, the U.S. Electric Vehicle Championship. In the race, there are many different vehicles with different power plants. For Venturer Project Director Mike Stritsky... Uh, the goal of the project is to build uh, a fuel cell-powered, zero-emissions electric vehicle that uses only um, uh, hydrogen for the fuel and which byproducts are only water and heat. This year, the Tour de Seoul will be going through our region on May 15th and 16th on its way from New York to Washington, D.C. And that means the pressure's on right now for Mike Stritsky's crew and its new entry, the New Jersey Genesis. We're two weeks away from the American Tour de Seoul, which is where we're going to debut the car. And there's, uh, there's a lot of work going on last minute, obviously, and a lot of last minute glitches that have to be worked out. But uh, we have a team of very dedicated partners and sponsors that are uh, uh, all working overtime seven days a week in order to get this thing done. They've come a long way from last year's auto. The thing that makes this year's car different is, is that we're building this car pretty much from the ground up. We took a SHO motor out of it and we put in a 114 horse electric motor, which should make this car a real screamer, which should have over 100 mile an hour plus and acceleration that's second to none. We put two hydrogen fuel cell stacks in. Last year's car had only one. But the real star of the show this year is that we're putting an onboard hydrogen generation system that is done by Millennium Cell in Eatontown. This will be the world's first application of this technology uh, in a fuel cell powered electric vehicle. We're able to store a lot of energy safely. And since we're only making it at the rate that we need, we're able to only have as much available hydrogen in the car as in a Bic lighter at any one time. Even though we store enough energy in the 18 gallons of sodium borohydride and water to go uh, five to 800 miles. How does it do it? To answer that question, you have to go to this laboratory at W.L. Gorin Associates in Elkton, Maryland where the fuel cell is the new frontier. Absolutely. It's a very hot field right now. Our group has grown tremendously. Um, the amount of activity, the amount of customers have grown tremendously. That growth is being supported by a company. With about 6,000 associates worldwide, we're involved in developing and manufacturing products for a variety of applications in uh, medical products, industrial products, electronic products, and our fabrics. Many people associate the Gore name with Gore-Tex, the waterproof membrane. Gore engineer Jeff Coldy has found a unique way to use this membrane technology to create a separator, which is the heart of the fuel cell. It is the actual device that generates electricity within a fuel cell. The membrane is at work inside the fuel cell of this generator that is powering this TV VCR. This device utilizes hydrogen uh, stored in these hydrogen cylinders, um, combines that with oxygen from air, which is drawn in here, and produces electricity and the electricity is fed to your device. There is a fan to help with air, air being drawn into it, but there, beyond that, there are no moving parts of this fuel cell system. So how much energy does it produce? This is an example of a very small fuel cell. This is producing about 50 watts. Fuel cells can produce megawatts of power. As for these bottles? These actually contain 70 liters of hydrogen compressed, and they produce power for, I believe, four hours. They can power cars, homes, even factories and going in the other direction. Fuel cells have been scaled down to one watt size, and, uh, and that's typically a power that might be required to, um, to work with a, a cellular phone. The potential is powerful. So is the attraction for ambitious engineers. There was a publication recently um, describing the hottest new job for engineers in the year 2000, and the number one hottest job for engineers was a fuel cell engineer. Talk about an adventure that will have a powerful impact. Could gasoline and nuclear reactors be replaced by...